And another point that you mentioned in your book, and it's something that I'm guilty of as well, it's when I try and explain mindfulness to people, I talk about how the brain changes shape. And then I refer to the amygdala and I say, yeah, you do eight weeks of meditation, the amygdala shrinks and the amygdala is responsible for the negative stuff. And, you know, and for, for a long time, I thought that I was accurately representing what actually what actually happened. So can you perhaps ex explain, you know, at a high level, you know, what happens to the brain when we meditate? And, you know, what are some of the misconceptions there? Yeah. So um, what you said was a classic piece of neuromythology mm -hmm. and it's quite widespread, yes. particularly as people are kind of hyping the science about mindfulness and meditation. Mm -hmm. it, it isn't to say nothing happens. Quite a bit does happen. It's just that not everything claimed, <laughs> particularly by people who are popularizing these methods, mm -hmm. actually does seem to happen from a scientific point of view. So uh, some of the benefits of mindfulness right at the beginning are quite surprising, actually. One of them is sharpening attention. Uh, and this, the, the neural substrate, the neural basis of that is not yet known, but we know from cognitive kind of science measures that mindfulness does help people pay attention better. For example, if you're a multitasker, you know, you're concentrating on this thing you're writing or this, this email or this project, and then you think, oh, I better check my email, my Facebook, my Instagram, what, whatever. And then, you know, minutes later, maybe an hour later, who knows, you go back to that project after multi, so-called multi <laughs> yeah. multitasking itself is, is a neuromythology. Yes. The brain doesn't do simultaneous things. It switches rapidly. Yeah. So when you go back to that first thing you're highly concentrated on, your concentration is much, much worse. And it takes a while to ramp up. Unless, and this is very interesting, unless you've done mindfulness. Yeah. Mindfulness seems to buffer the loss of concentration mm -hmm. uh, from multitasking. And so it enhances the ability to focus. Well, that, that's pretty simple because in mindfulness, for example, if you're doing mindfulness of breathing, you're, the point is to keep your attention on your breath. The mind's going to wander. It wanders on average 50% of the time in a daily life. Mm -hmm. So your mind wanders off. And then you notice it wandering. That's the moment of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. And you bring it back to, the, to your breath. Yeah. That strengthens the neural connectivity for mindfulness. And there's a study out of uh, Emory University that showed the longer people have done meditation, the stronger the circuitry for that seems to be. And so uh, focusing concentration is one benefit. Another is what's called working memory. Working memory is... The fact that when you pay attention to what you're hearing right now, that or, or learning right now if you're a student, that goes into a, what's called working memory, which is short term, gets transferred to long term memory, and then later you can call it, recall it. Mm -hmm. That's what we call learning. Yeah. So when they taught students at the University of California this method, they were surprised that uh, on their graduate school entrance exams, the students who had the mindfulness training did 30% better on their scores yeah. than a, a comparable group of, of students. Well, that's astounding. It's wrong. Yeah. Then you uh, mentioned the amygdala. The amygdala is the brain's radar for threat. It's the trigger for the fight or flight mm -hmm. or freeze. Yeah. It's what it makes people violent. It's what mm -hmm. makes people go off the deep end to behavior. Thing. And the amygdala does a lot of things, but that's one of the things that we wish it would not do as much. Yeah. The amygdala is inhibited by circuitry from the prefrontal cortex, the brain's executive, right behind the forehead. And one benefit of mindfulness and continuing to meditate seems to be that the control circuitry for the amygdala gets stronger so that you can manage your amygdala hijacks, if you will, yeah. better. Particularly, you can't determine when you're going to feel anger or how angry you're going to feel. Your choice point is in how long you feel. Yeah. And meditation, mindless, reduces the recovery time. In other words, you recover more quickly. Mm -hmm. That's very powerful.